This is Coding Math, episode 26, 2D and 3D coordinate rotation. And this is a continuation of our series on 3D modeling and rendering. In episode 25, we switched over from modeling points with Y, rotation, and angle to modeling them with X, Y, and Z. If you're interested in learning more about the differences between these two, do a search for polar coordinates versus Cartesian coordinates. Now this change made it much easier to model objects and move the points making up the objects around in 3D space, to translate them in other words, but it broke our ability to rotate them around in that space. Purpose of this video is to fix that. But we're going to begin by jumping back into two dimensions. Say we have a coordinate system here. This is the origin, 0, 0, minus x over here, plus x over here, and because we're in canvas, minus y up here and plus y down here. And say we have a point here, call it 5, 3. Say we want to rotate this point around the origin so that it winds up over here. And we want to know its new coordinates at that point. How do you do that? Well, you could draw a triangle here and use the Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuse here, which would be the radius, and then use arctangent to get this angle here, then add this angle to that angle to get a new total angle, and finally use cosine and sine of this new angle along with this radius to get the updated x and y coordinates. Hopefully that all makes sense to you. If not, check out some of the earlier coding math videos. All of this stuff has been covered in depth. But anyways, that should work fine, but it's a multi-step process with a square root, an arctangent, sine, cosine, and various other arithmetic. Surely there has to be a better way. Well, if there wasn't, this would be a very short video. But there is. So here's the magic formula. For an original point, x, y, to get the rotated coordinates, we'll call them x1, y1, use this formula. x1 equals x times cosine of the angle minus y times the sine of the angle. And y1 equals y times the cosine of the angle plus x times the sine of the angle. Here, the angle is the amount you want to rotate the point, not the total resulting angle. This is super useful. For the example we talked about, if the point is 5, 3 and you want to rotate it, say, 0 0.5 radians, x1 equals 5 times cosine 0 0.5 minus 3 times sine 0 0.5. And y1 equals 3 times cosine 0 0.5 plus 5 times sine 0 0.5. Now, I'm not going to go into how this formula is derived, but I'm sure you can dig it up if you really need to know. It's all got to do with a rotation matrix. But this is one that you should just memorize. There aren't many of those, but this is one. So let's see this in action. Here's a file called 2d.js with some basic animation templating. I'm going to add a point object with an x of 300 and a y of 200 and a variable called delta set at 0 0.05. Delta is the angle in radians that will rotate the point on each frame. Then I'll translate the context to center screen. In the update function, we'll clear the canvas, and then draw an arc at the current position of that point. Then I'm going to pre-calculate the cosine and sine, since we'll need them twice. Then I'll calculate the new x and y using the formulas I just showed you. Those get assigned back as new coordinates for the point. Now, of course, in this example, delta is never changing, so I could just calculate sine and cosine a single time outside of the loop. But maybe you want to play with this one and make delta variable based on mouse position or whatever. So, that's that. Coordinate rotation. No need to beat it to death. Let's move on to 3D. Actually, in a sense, we've already covered part of 3D coordinate rotation. We just did rotation around the z-axis. In 3D rotation, you generally choose which axis you rotate around. 
it's the positions of the other two axes that change. So we just rotate it around the z-axis and it changed the x and y positions of the point. You can picture z-axis rotation as if you were looking straight into the propeller of a plane or a window fan. The axle or center of rotation extends away from you on the z-axis. The blades go around that center. They go left and right and up and down, but they stay the same distance from you. X-axis rotation, however, is like looking down at the wheel of a bicycle that you're riding. The axle of the wheel is extending to the left and right, so it's the x-axis. From your viewpoint, any point on the tire is moving forward and backward on the z-axis, and up and down on the y-axis. Finally, y-axis rotation is like looking at a turntable playing on a record. When I was a kid, we didn't have MP3 players. We had stacks of vinyl records and... But I digress. The center spindle extends up and down on the y-axis, and any point on the record itself will move back and forth on x and z. The formulas for rotation on the x and y axes are the same as for 2D, or rotation on the z axis. You just swap out the relevant axes. So, for x axis rotation, y1 equals y times cosine angle minus z times sine angle. And z1 equals z times cosine angle plus y times sine angle. And for y axis rotation, x1 equals x times cosine of the angle minus z times the sine of the angle. And z1 equals z times the cosine of the angle, plus x times the sine of the angle. Hopefully you can see the pattern there. Now let's code this up in 3D. I'm going to start with the code we ended off with last week. Actually, there were a few errors in last week's code which were mentioned to me, and I added some annotations to the video on them. So this week we're going to start with the corrected version of that code that we ended off with last week. I'm going to add three new functions in here. Rotate X, Rotate Y, and Rotate Z. In Rotate X, I'll be rotating around the X axis. So I'll pre-calculate cosine and sine, loop through the points, get a reference to each point, and apply the rotation using that formula. And finally, store the new y and z coordinates back on each point. At the end, I'll also set needs update to true so that the model gets re rendered. Rotate y and rotate z will do exactly the same thing, but on different axes. So I'll just do my Steve Austin typing. Not talking about the wrestler there. Okay, now in that key down handler, I'm going to throw in an if statement in the left key block. If the control key is down, I'm going to call rotate y 0 0.05. Else, do the usual translation on x. And the same thing on the right key. For the up key, I'll do the same thing with an else if statement and rotate x 0 0.05. And similar for the down key. So now, in addition to the key controls we set up last week, if you hold down control while pressing keys, the model should rotate. Let's see. Well, it is kind of rotating, but it's kind of freaking out too. Now, what's happening here is that it's rotating around the 3D origin, which is very close to the camera. So the whole model eventually goes behind the camera. This makes our perspective calculation do some nonsensical stuff. Now we'll get around to fixing that eventually, but in the meantime, let's just change that point that the model is rotating around. There are a few ways to do this. What I'm going to do is add a center z variable and set it up to 1500. Then I'll redefine the points of this cube so that instead of 1500 on z, there'll be 500 and minus 500. So the cube's going to be centered on that center z point and extend 500 on either side of it. 
Finally, we'll just base our perspective on FL divided by FL plus PZ plus center Z. This adds center Z back into the mix for perspective, but it's not there for the rotation. And now you have full rotation capabilities, as well as translation. Of course, you can still wind up in a situation where the perspective gets messed up, so we'll have to get to that in some future episode. But this is looking pretty good otherwise. Now, as my usual disclaimer, this whole center Z thing and the way I've implemented it is not necessarily the best solution. There are all kinds of things you could do here and different ways you can handle this. What I'm hoping mostly is to have you walk away with an understanding and a mental vision of what's going on here so that you can do whatever you want with it. Anyway, we've come a long way from postcards and space, but we still have a long way to go, so we'll take another small step next week. See you then.